Hi, welcome to this tutorial. I'm Mark Mularczyk from SciTrain.co.uk, one of the UK's leading specialists in Adobe Certified Training and a Photoshop instructor. Now, today we'll talk about HDR Pro, a new HDR Pro inside Adobe Photoshop CS5. Now, HDR, to start with, stands for High Dynamic Range. And we use HDR so we could, for example, we can take a number of shots, like in this here, inside the mini bridge, I've got four shots of this image here, different exposures, so we can, I'm just going to open them all in Adobe Camera Raw, here, in Adobe Photoshop, we can take different exposures of the same shot to cover different ranges of brightness, luminance and color in the images. That is one of the examples what you get when you take a normal photograph. Well, I can see some details here, but I can hardly see anything in the sky. Right? Now if I get this dark shot, I can see a beautiful sky, but I can hardly see anything in the details here. This is what normally happens. The camera trying, tr is trying to leverage the options in here. So what we're going to do with HDR Pro is we're going to put all these images together and create a beautiful high dynamic range image that will show us the foreground and the background including the sky and the details in these images. Okay, so I'm here in camera. Now if I want to make any changes here, here's a tip for you. Don't make any changes in the basic tab because this will be displayed in the HDR Pro. What you can do is you can deal with the lens uh, with the lens correction. So you can try to remove some lens distortions, but don't do anything in the basic tab. Okay, you can do maybe some retouching. You get some parts missing, or you can use the lens correction section to get rid of distortions or chromatic aberrations or vignetting. So I'm just going to cancel that for now. By the way, I'm using a mini bridge in Photoshop CS5. I could also do exactly the same from Adobe Bridge. And I could do it in Photoshop. So I could go to File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use mini bridge and I'm going to use these tools icon here and then Photoshop and Merge to HDR Pro. This is going to open all these images inside um, HDR Pro dialog box. Now when you take images, this will be a tip for you as a photographer, make sure you use different exposure. Now when you shoot, first of all you should use a tripod just to make sure that the image is nicely aligned. If you don't use a tripod, if you handheld your camera, Photoshop will try to align it. This is one of the parts of the HDR Pro now in Photoshop CS5. Photoshop will try to um, align the images for you. Also, when you took multiple shots, it's best if you use manual mode on your camera. Even many compact cameras nowadays use manual mode or use the aperture priority. Then when it's done, it's going to open this dialog box for HDR Pro. Okay, with the images. Now you can see the images here in the bottom left corner. That's how the images were taken. Okay, these four images here. I would start with the presets here in the top right corner. There's loads of presets that ship with HDR Pro dialog box in Photoshop CS5 and that's what I would normally start to see the effects. So it's a flat preset. Now we have three groups of presets. Monochromatic, so this will create a monochromatic images or black and white images and the monochromatic artistic looks really nice very HDR <laughs> then we have the second group with photorealistic images and then the surrealistic okay, which creates surreal images this is the kind of images you, you can, you've probably already seen online very interesting effect with very interesting colors in this case I like this one here this looks really really good now there's only one problem here like you can see it in here in the clouds this is because the images were taken one after another and we have some ghost in here in the clouds but fortunately here in Flash CS5 in Photoshop CS5 in HDR Pro we have this option here remove ghosts so what this is going to do is it's going to 
try to remove the ghost in, in the images. Okay, well, this was really, really good, really easy. Now, what it did here, what happened, is Photoshop looked into one of the images and took the sky from one of these images. So it doesn't overlap the clouds. Now, if I'm not happy with this one, I can select which image will be used as the base image okay, for the effect. All right. For example, I can click on this one here, and you can see the clouds shift a bit. Or maybe this one. All right. So you can decide which one should be used for ghosting, to remove the ghosting effect. This is really, really good. Okay, now what else? We have the bit mode here, 816 or 32 bit. All right. And then local adaptation. Now this is the drill menu. Let's have a quick look on these options here. Highlight compression. This one doesn't have any options, right? This uses the automatic toning method for HDR. Now we have exposure and gamma, two sliders here. We can adjust overall image tone using the exposure slider, or we can adjust the gamma, which is the difference between highlights and shadows. Maybe exposure a bit. See here. Let's lower the gamma, maybe a bit more. Well, you can see what's happening. It's really hard to get this nice HDR look. Now we have equalized histogram. Again, no options here. So we want to cover that. And then the best one, which is the default actually here, is the local adaptation. Local adaptation gives you access to loads of sliders in here. So let's see what we can do here. First, we have the edge glow. With the radius setting, we can control the size of the glowing effect around the edges. Okay, just going to lower it to show you what it does. You can see how it changes this glowing effect around the edges and changing the radius. Okay. Then I can also apply some strength. Okay. So if I lower it, this will reduce the strength on the edges. So that's the strength. Then we have tone. I'm going to move the strength back. I'll move it to maximum and then incre increase the radius. I'll go up to maximum or maybe slightly less than that. And strength slightly lower. Okay, that's good. Then we have tone and detail. Okay, first the gamma, so the difference between highlights and shadows. So we can soften the effect if we lower the gamma. Now, in this case, I really like that. I'm even going to increase that a bit. Then exposure. So we can bring the exposure up and down. Whoa. Not something I would look in. You know, this looks good. Okay. Then the detail slider. Okay. Just going to lower it to show you how it changes the detail, the contrast in the details. So I'll leave it on the maximum. Then the shadow slider. Okay. This will play with the shadows. So if I just increase that. This will increase the light in the shadow areas. I don't have much shadows here, they're all darks and brights. You can see how it changes here in the foreground. So I'm just going to change it back in normal. By the way, the usual keyboard shortcuts as in camera If you want to change your slider back to the original position, just double click on it. And then the highlights. I'm going to leave it as well. Now in the bottom here we have the color curve with vibrance and saturation sliders. And as you probably know, if you've used Photoshop and Lightroom. Saturation will increase or decrease the overall color intensity in the image. This looks not too bad, but I'm just going to change it, take it back to, let's say, about that. But vibrance is more subtle. Vibrance will increase only saturation of the really flat colors and will minimize clipping. So with vibrance, I can easily drag it to the maximum. And then I can start moving the saturation slider. To bring more color in the images. Let's see if I go to maximum, that's probably too high, a bit too high. I'll stick to about 60, 70. This looks okay. And then we have the curve tab here, like the curves inside Photoshop. So I could move it to increase the overall brightness on the image or darken it. If I want to create a really contrasty effect, I will add a Stop in here and one more here, and I'll move these sliders to create a more like the shape of letter S. Letter S. Okay, this looks good. 
this looks not too bad okay so that's how you set these settings here inside HDR Pro then you just press OK and oh, it's, it's off the screen so I just pressed enter on my keyboard and this will exit this dialog box and Photoshop will open this image as an HDR file inside Adobe Photoshop and then we can make some additional adjustments for example you can apply the usual adjustment layers as you do inside Photoshop now this takes longer if you use raw images. I used raw images that were supplied by Adobe and it takes longer than, than usual. Okay? But if you use JPEGs, or, or you should use HDR, uh, you should really use raw images because you play well, you get the highest possible quality for your images. Um, unless you don't have access to HDR to raw images, then you can use JPEGs or PSD files. In this case I'm using raw images it takes a bit longer as that so you'll see just a moment the final result 